everyone says he wants a dream job, but people often don't apply for their dream jobs. And there are a few reasons why they don't do so. One, sending my resume out to the whole world doesn't reflect well on me. This can be true if you are highly qualified or if you are in C-level type of jobs. Say, if the news of you looking out could affect your company's share price or to be used by your competitor in less favorable ways, then yes, you want to keep your job search process very exclusive and secretive. The thing is, it's not the case for most of the people. And also, all recruitment professionals are supposed to follow the ethics of keeping your application confidential. And also, even if you send your uh, profile to recruitment agency, they are not supposed to send your profiles around without your consent. Still, most people don't apply to enough jobs. We tend to apply for only the jobs we are familiar with, we are confident that we have a very good chance for. Otherwise, we are worried. If we apply for a job not for me, they will think I'm stupid. So now let's take a step back and look at this statement. Let's say Wendy says she's not applying for a job because Wendy is worried about what the employer things of her. I always like to say that we should not care what the employer thinks about what to do. Wendy is a good person and she is being very considerate to the potential employers. So all right, let's say if Wendy does send out the application and it causes some discomfort or inconvenience to the employer, how big is the damage? Maybe a two second wasted time before trashing it, or at worst, some sort of displeasure. But it's also possible that the employer finds her profile interesting and wants to keep it for future roles. And it could even be possible that the employer calls her up for an interview. Don't we hear all this all the time that, you know, they say, your profile is not what I had in mind, but it looks so interesting, I wanted to find out more. Now, enough about the employer. Let's look at what Wendy wants to achieve. She wants to get more interviews so that she will have more job opportunities. For each job, she has two choices. Unlikely, I will get the job, so I'm not sending my profile to avoid rejection. Or, unlikely, I will get the job, but it's an interesting job if I do get it, so let me still try. The result, either a 0% chance or something between 0% to 50% chance. Choose to apply for more jobs, get your profile seen by more people. This is going to be a win-win scenario. It increases the employer's chances for getting a great candidate and it also inc increases your chances of getting a great job. Reason number two, I feel terrible about being rejected. Sometimes we don't want to admit, or sometimes we do, the real reason of holding back is actually fear of rejection. We can find rejection letters extremely demoralizing. One of my clients told me, I'm already feeling so low and every rejection letter weighs me down even further. So I asked him, Hmm, do you believe the person they chose is better than you then? Hmm, not necessarily. So, what are the reasons they chose the other person over you? My client said, hmm, many reasons. Sometimes could be just because we didn't have chemistry. Or maybe they are looking for something specific that I just don't have. Very well, so you are saying rejection does not mean you are not good. It just means that the company did not think you are suitable. The company could be right that someone else is more suitable. Or the company could be wrong. 
they are missing a great candidate like you who could have contributed a lot to the company. Either way, I want to say that a rejection letter is only a rejection to your application. It's definitely not saying that you are not good and it's not because you are not good. Reason number three. Mm, I don't want the bad jobs to take up my time and energy. That's true. You only need one offer to be happy ever after or at least for a period of time. So let's say you applied for 100 jobs and even if you are rejected by 99 of them and one, just one, give you an offer that you like, then I would still call it a perfect scenario because how many jobs can you take on? Just one. But if for all the 100 jobs, no one rejected you and you got all the offers, and, but all of them are rubbish and you've never, you are never going for them, then this means nothing to you but wasted time to go through interviews and application. So yes, we are aligned that quantity does not matter as much as quality. I know I've been encouraging you to apply for more jobs, but to please do only apply for jobs that you are interested in, whether or not you think you are qualified for it. But drop, for, drop all the jobs that you think you will never ever go for it. It's because it's just like finding a life partner. You only need to find one person who really likes you and whom you also like. To wrap up, apply for more jobs, get your profile seen by more people. This is a win-win situation for both you and your potential employers. If fear of rejection is blocking you, then remember it does not say anything about who you are, how good you are. Lastly, you only need one offer that you'd like, so do not spend time on jobs that you will never take up. I hope this was helpful for you. Good luck on getting more interviews.